Hello, this is Mike at Gary Scratch. Welcome back to our ongoing Babylon JS tutorial series. Today we are going to be taking a look at materials, and we're going to jump right in and cover one of the materials we actually looked at very early on in the series, and that is to actually apply a wireframe to our shape. Now let's jump straight into the code, and here we are. Now what we've done here is we've created the box like normal. Our background color is a clear white. We've set up an arc rotation camera, and then we get here, and this is the crux of this example: is we basically create a new material of type standard material. Now standard material is what you are going to use 95% of the time. You can think of standard material as a kind of a collection of things. It is your interface to the OpenGL back end, so it handles some of like the shader tie-in setups for you. And it's sort of a collection of um, texture map options and a bunch of built-in attributes, things like color, lighting models, etc. We'll look at some of that in detail in a moment. Now this is probably the simplest shader material you can actually create. What we've done is we've created a material, and like all things Babylon JS, we've named it and we've uh, assigned it to the scene. And the key thing with, we set a built-in property of it of wireframe. Is it a wireframe, yes or no? We said, yes, this is a wireframe. And then finally, we apply said material to our box's material attribute. And when you see this actually running in the browser, Coincidentally, this code is already up and available. Everything we're covering here is available on GameFromScratch.com, and I will link the comment down below. So here is the end result of our example. All it has done is basically rendered our box as a wireframe object. Very simple, very easy. Now the reality is though, you're not gonna be rendering as wireframe that often. So let's take a look at the next example. And we're gonna look at some of those basic attributes that are actually built into um, this uh, material or, or this uh, standard material object. Now first off, I'm gonna add a light to the scene just so we got a little bit more complexity going on here. So var light equals new. Now this was all covered in a previous tutorial. So I assume you've gone through the past tutorials. We'll call this point light. So new Babylon dot vector. Can't type today. Three. And we will create the at 10 units up the y-axis. And of course, it is in our scene. Next up, so we create a new point light. One of the cool things is, is we've got an arc rotate camera. We're actually gonna rotate this light with the camera. And all we have to do there to make that happen is just parent it. So as our camera rotates around, think of this as like a spotlight attached to a camera. Um, and our light dot diffuse, which you can think of generally diffuse means color. Uh, new Babylon. Come on, Babylon dot color three. So sending in three values, uh, zero, zero, zero would be black, one, one, one is then alternatively white. Now, if you don't set the diffuse, I actually believe the default color is white in this particular case. Uh, so now we're gonna go ahead, we're just gonna get rid of this wireframe thing. So save that up. Let's go over to our browser and see our immediate result. Dun, 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 dun. So what you're seeing here is a black cube because we've set no properties of it. And the white you're seeing there is a result of the light that we're shining at it. So as I move this guy around, you're gonna see that light interacting with our material. That's pretty cool. That's all being taken care of by the material under the scenes. It handles the, uh, the shader programming for us. Uh, so let's head on back over here. So now that we actually have this basic material, let's make it a little bit more interesting. First off, as I mentioned earlier, diffuse is, uh, one second, what you can think of traditionally as your color channel. So let's actually set this material to a particular color. Uh, so material.diffuse color equals babylon.color3.blue. So, and immediately we'll see our results. We now have a blue material. And once again, there's a white light being shined at it. You can see the interactions as we rotate our camera around. So that's how easy it is to set the color. Again, the diffuse color is one of the built-in attributes of the standard, um, standard material. Uh, so that we've just set. Let's look at another example. This one's a little bit harder to define, is emissive color. 
Now, emissive color can be thought of as self-lighting. Uh, so say you've got some mosses or lichens that give off you know, a greenish glow or whatever, that would generally be uh, the diffuse color. These are not lights from the scene, instead they are lights from um, self-lighting from the material. They will not affect other objects in the scene, however, they only affect the object that is giving the light off. So here we're going to have our object give off a red hue. Uh, Babylon.color3.red. I'll go ahead and run that. And there you can see. So the guy is giving off a, a reddish hue. Now this is actually making our example pretty ugly, but if you've got you know self-lit materials, it's a mist of color that you will use for that. There's also a, um, there's intensity that you can use to determine how much light is emitted. Now next up we're going to look at is uh, specular color. Now, specular color is the color where light interacts. Now, to explain that for a second, we've got a white light coming in with no specular color set. So I'll get rid of this emissive. Did I not save? Go back here. So here we are. Ah, I screwed something up. Just a second. Diffuse color. Oh. All right. So here is our default scene. And notice as I bring the light around, it's a white light. So it's a normal white light there. The um, specular color is how that color or how light will interact with the surface. So we're going to go ahead and make the specular color this time red. Um, like so. So now when we go ahead and see the interaction of light. So here is our default scene. See? So that is how light interplays with this material. So that instead of coming in as a white light, it now hits the surface and is interacted with as a red light. So emissive can be thought of as the color of light interacting with this material. Um, next step we've got, very simple concept. Again, I'll get rid of that comment. So we're back to our standard blue material. Very handy value is the alpha channel. Now alpha channel is basically, you can think of it as opacity or transparency with a value of zero being completely transparent. So there we go, almost as transparent as you can get. And then we go up to 0 0.9, which would be almost as opaque as you can get. Technically, if there was an object behind this, you would actually see uh, a little bit of that object through this. Um, so that's what alpha comes in as. Um, yeah, so that's kind of I think all I was going to cover for this particular example. Now the cool thing is you can actually modify this stuff over time. So let's go ahead and get rid of the alpha call there. Go back to our trusty loop here. And let's get a reference to our material. Var material or material. Material equals scene dot get mesh by name box material. So we're getting the material property of our mesh named box. Now remember when we created the box, we gave it the key or the ID of box. So that's how we're getting this reference back. And we are setting uh, the material of box here. So that's what we're doing. We're just getting a reference to our material uh, of the object named box. And what we'll do is material dot alpha minus equals zero minus equals zero point what if Material dot alpha less than equal to zero. Material dot alpha equals one. And go ahead and run this code. And there you can see fading over time until it gets to the end and then we go full opaque. Uh, so that is like some of the basic attributes built into the standard material. This is allows you to do things as you've seen here. Now what you're gonna do a lot of times though is texture map. Uh, now the box that's created for us nicely has UV map data done for it. UV map basically is sort of like coordinates, 2D coordinates on a, to a 3D object. It allows you to paste textures or images directly on top of the image. And let's go ahead and take a look at doing that. Now first off, we need some textures. And I'm going to use this cool image. I like it. I don't know. It speaks to me. And let's go ahead and texture that to our object. So first off, we're going to have to get rid of a few things. Uh, we don't need this transparency anymore. So you be gone. Uh, we're not going to play with the color in this case. So still want to apply it. But those things all gone. Okay. So now what we are going to do is apply texture map to our surface. 
Okay, and like I said, the standard material is also a container for a number of different textures. So there are different kinds of textures. We'll talk about a couple of them in this particular example. Uh, but what we are going to do is a diffuse texture. Now, once again, diffuse, you can almost think of as color. So the color channel, and this is going to be you know, where the color data comes from for our particular material. So material.diffuse, and then in case texture equals new Babylon dot texture, pass in the file name, gfs.png, and again, it's in our scene. So you'll notice, I, once again, Babylon JS approach to things is very, very, very consistent in their naming conventions, etc. And well, truth be told, actually, I think this is all we need to do. Uh, let's go over to our browser, reload. There you go. There is our texture applied to each face. Now the actual, um, the UV maps or the coordinates that tell us how to apply were created for us when we created the box. Now you can go into the sub mesh and um, modify the UV coordinates by hand. Now UV coordinate is simply X and Y by another name. So this particular face has a UV coordinate and this would be, well in this case it's rotated. But let's say that, yeah, let's use an example that's not upside down. Ah, here we go. In this particular face, so this is a face underlying, the UV here goes zero to one, and then zero to one. So it's it's mapping the pixels back to the back particular face, and you can modify those however you want. You can also do something called tiling, you can do UV scaling, so if you tiled this five times, it would replicate across the surface, so you'd have like one, two, three, four, five, and then so on and so forth. So this would be replicated if you tiled it along the U and the V axis five times, you would have 25 of these pastered onto the surface instead of just the one. But UV texturing is a little bit beyond what we're gonna get into. And truth of the matter is most of you probably won't need to touch UVs when dealing with the Babylon engine. Your um, content creation tool that you're gonna use to create models is gonna take care of it for you or you're gonna use the built-in uh, UV sets that it created for you. It's only if you're gonna be creating primitives by hand that you really have to understand how to create the UV set to go with it. All right, so anyways, that is a um, texture applied to a surface. Very, very simple. You basically just load the texture and apply it to the appropriate surface. Now, let's look at another example. Now, this is one of those areas where um, Babylon JS's conventions, their naming convention is a little confusing. The rest of the world calls this a normal map. And it looks like this. Now, if you want some idea of how a normal map works, I actually did a video on it, but the basic idea here is it gives normal, or like a normal is the direction of faces facing. So basically it, it allows the renderer to know you know, details about a particular face. Well, normal mapping, what it allows you to do is add the illusion of detail where there is none. So just like a UV map, it goes across the surface like this, but where there are certain different colors, it will add or subtract height based off what that particular color is. And there's actually X, Y, and Z data encoded into this particular image. So you can manipulate the face um, or subsection of a polygon based off of each particular pixel within this image. Again, I've done a video on this. I will link it down below if you want more detail on how normal maps work. Now, what's a little confusing is when you get into the world of um, Babylon JS, they unfortunately called this a bump texture. Bump texture. So in the entirety of the rest of the world, it's a normal map. Here, it's a bump texture. So new, and then here we go with that, some of that consistency again, texture, and that was called gfs underscore normal dot png dot scene. So now we've added normal information. So instead of just having our straight, normal, plain polygons with, without a lot of detail, we'll look at it really quickly again. So here's our image now. Well, we're gonna add a whole lot more fake image without adding any more polygons to the scene. And this is how you can actually add complexity to your scene. So we'll go ahead and save that result, flip on back and reload. And then now you see See the lighting model, how it's doing shadowing as if there's more to the surfaces? That is the normal map in action. So it allows you to add detail so that when it's rendering, it treats it as if there were a whole lot more polygons there, even though there aren't. So normal maps are very, very, very powerful. Um, we can also play with a bit how the normal map is applied by setting the roughness. So here, let's go ahead. It's another attribute built in, so 0 0.5, and here is your end result. I still did actually save that. And I think that is what I am going to cover for today. Let me just make sure that my uh, 
other examples going on. Now, what I do want you to be aware of, though, and we'll here we'll go there really quickly. Um, standard material. Well, that's not it. All right, standard material Babylon JS. I don't want the tutorial, I want the reference. All right, here we go. So as I said earlier, it's actually a collection of containers of different textures. And so far we used the diffuse texture, but I just want you to be aware there are a whole lot more. There's an ambient texture, which is for, um, I believe ambient lighting effect on the surface. Uh, you got an opacity texture, which can be used like we did alpha earlier. Well, you can actually use a texture that determines if a particular portion of your surface is rendered or not. Uh, reflection textures, emissive texture, uh, same thing as the emissive color before, but this actually you know applies it according to an underlying texture image you're using. Uh, specular, again, that's for the lighting interaction. We've got bump texture, which we saw earlier was the same as a normal texture, and light map texture. So there are a bunch of more values here. And you can also see we've got some properties that we didn't also use. Uh, specular power, which is what controls the specular colors amount. Um, so I'll write, uh, so a lot of these in here, but you got and then you got a bunch of different settings. So you do, should be aware that there is a little bit more to the standard material than what we covered here, especially a number of different textures. Now the textures that we covered today, the bump texture and the diffuse texture, are by far the most commonly used texture types. That's why I actually chose to focus them. But do be aware that these other types do exist. And really, that's all we are going to cover today. A very uh, simple tutorial for the most part. I hope you did find that useful. Uh, if you did, please do click like. And uh, we got all kinds of tutorials, especially we got the ongoing series here for Babylon JS, and we got a lot more to come. Uh, so if you are interested, please do click subscribe. And of course, there is the text-based version of this tutorial available. I will link it down below along with the link to that uh, normal map tutorial. So hope you found that useful. I will see you all later. Goodbye.